but I would say I think you are so quicker in general, as a general. Those shops are across, just I went through. I used to have lost clothes in my life. The shop keepers and the iPods got what they were being there. I had it up to it. today. Um, just a couple of announcements, then I'm going to introduce myself and introduce Jennifer, but um, how many of you have ever been to Carowinds? Did you have a good time? We're going tomorrow at 8.45 to be in the parking lot. The youth are going tomorrow, um, so uh, that will be a good time, but you we need you here at 8.45. We're going to pull out of the parking lot at 9 o'clock uh, for a day of fun and roller coasters. Um, we'll be back in the parking lot by 5 o'clock uh, tomorrow afternoon. Um, also on your bulletin, the back of your bulletin, if you'll turn that around, 
Uh, next Saturday, there will be a shower for Robbie and Jennifer's daughter, Gracie. Uh, Gracie, uh, many of you know, it's been a few years since she lived here, but uh, she is having their first grandchild. So Robbie, you're going to be a granddad. Jennifer, you're going to be a grandma. But I still have the perfect grandchild. No, just so you know. Um, so that happens at 2 o'clock in the community room, and all are invited to that. Uh, again, welcome. My name's Paul. I'm one of the preachers here. This is Jennifer, another one of the preachers. You got anything? I said everything. I said everything. Yeah, I are y'all ready? To are y'all ready to worship? Y'all yeah. ready to worship then? Before you do, smile at somebody. Stand up, smile at somebody, and just look at them. You can hug them. You can shake their hand. You can just smile at them. Welcome to worship.
All right, there's, I saw children come in, so I know they're out there. <laughs> come forward for some children's time here. Thank you, Savannah. Uh, as we come to the time where we pray for one another, before we begin our prayers, I'm going to ask, how have you seen God working in your life, or what special joys do you have? Anybody have any special joys? My parents' 50th wedding anniversary. Parents' 50th wedding anniversary. Wow, that's a joy. All right, any other joys? Coming to the service? Okay, welcome. We're glad you're here. Absolutely. You see, you can tell people you worship with chickens today. You know? That's what we do here. Any other joys? First fruits from the garden. First fruits from the garden. That's right. Amen to that. A lot of people will get fed from this parable garden here. Any other joys? Yes, ma'am. My mom and my dad have been out of town. They'll come here back and get town today. All right. So they've been away and they're coming back today. That's good, Allie. Thank you. Well, as we come to the time where we pray for one another, I want to lift up some names that... Uh, we have been given. Uh, if you will remember Ruth Kaiser and Cindy Powell and Ann Bolick and Nora Siegel 
and Lisa Reese, Walter Burnett, Aiden Cox, Kim McLaughlin, Scott Anderson, Sarah Jane Mann, Amanda Twitchell, Steve Hedrick, uh, Vicki Hester, her mother passed away last week, uh, but continued prayers to, to be with uh, Vicki and her family. Greg Loffenberg's dad, Bob. If we'll remember Amanda Lane, Darlene Sherman, Bob Lowry, Mona Sanders, who's Phyllis Yost's sister, Oliver, a child, Chris Brown's grandson, and Monica Thomas, who will be having surgery. So as we go to God in prayer, I, I remind you to, to keep these persons in your thoughts and prayers and those in your heart. And going to invite us just into a time of prayer now. Personal prayer, and then I'll lead us in a pastoral prayer, and then we'll all pray the Lord's Prayer today. But let us pray. Gracious God, as we bow before you in these moments of prayer, we are very much indeed mindful. Mindful that you bring us here in the beauty of this place to worship you and to praise you. And Lord, we're grateful that you have called all of us here this day to worship. And so as we fellowship and as we worship, I pray, Lord, that you open our hearts and our souls and our minds to experience your presence in the sounds of your creation, in the singing of praise to you, and in the proclaiming of Scripture, Lord. We ask you open our hearts and our souls and our minds this day to feel your presence in this place. Lord, as we bow our heads before you we we pray for your world oh how we pray for peace we pray O oh lord that you would be with our brothers and sisters all across the world who live in fear fear of bombs being dropped on their homes and their towns fear lord of war we pray for our leaders, not only in this community and in our state and in our country, but all across the world. I pray, Lord, that you would turn the, the leaders' hearts to lead with a servant's heart, not with a selfish heart. So we pray this day, Lord, for your world and your creation. We pray for your church, Lord. May we as your church, may we continually be that place that, that offers love and forgiveness and grace to all who enter. And so, Lord, we pray for your church. You heard us, Lord, speak these names out loud. You know each of their needs. You know each of their concerns. But Lord, there are some that we still hold close in our heart. Hear our prayers for all your people this day, Lord. And hear our prayers for ourselves, Lord. For we confess that there are those times we only think about our needs. We step on others to get ahead. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Renew us and create in us a clean heart. Lord, hear all our prayers, for we offer them with confidence this day. Because we offer them in the name of Christ who taught each of us to pray by saying. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Go through chapter 5, verse 1. So I invite you to hear these words. 
But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with the scripture, I believe and so I spoke, we also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake so that the grace as it extends to more and more people may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For that we can be seen in temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Friends, this is the word of God today for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we come into this place and we feel your presence in a powerful way. Just being out in your creation, out in nature, we feel your presence among us. And so I would pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would hear the words that you would have us to hear this day, and that you would set our hearts on fire for love of you. For it is in Christ's name I pray. Amen. So I don't know if you're like me or not, but oftentimes I don't notice things until they affect me. An example of that might be when I get a new car. I've never noticed the other cars like mine until I'm driving that car, and then suddenly you see all of those, right? I got a, a Jeep back in October, and I didn't ever really notice a lot of Jeeps, and now I notice every single Jeep. It's just how it works. We don't often notice things in our lives. In fact, I had attended many, many funerals throughout my life, but it wasn't until I was called into pastoral ministry and I actually started helping with funerals that I started noticing things. For example, I noticed that every funeral began and ended in the same exact way, and it was, it was curious to me because we're all so unique, we're all so individual, so why wouldn't we shape funerals to shape the person, right? And so I asked the question of a friend of mine, a mentor of mine, I said, why is it that every funeral begins the same and ends the same? Shouldn't we make them really unique just as the person is? And this is the response that I got. The response was, well, in life and in death, we are all the same. Therefore, would it not make sense that our funerals begin and end the same way you see, we're all created in the image of God, and in death we are all the same. So the place where you would make a funeral unique would be the eulogy, or the friends and the family that speak of the person, or the songs that you choose to sing. In life and in death, we are all the same. I thought of those words when I read this scripture, because that chapter 5, verse 1, if you've attended a funeral here at all, it is the last scripture of comfort that we read before we move into the prayer. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. We say those words and then we do the opening prayer. And I was reminded, I was reminded of those, those words ringing true in my mind. But, but oftentimes, you know, we, we forget things like that. We forget that we're all created in the image of God. We forget that we're all uniquely created. We forget that each and every person around us is, in fact, a child of God. We're so pulled in so many different ways by this world, by what we hear on the news, by what we hear in our community. We find all the things in the world to separate ourselves. We get so busy and so caught up with our agendas, what's important to us, our calendars, our work schedules, our family members, our lives, even our church, right? We get so caught up and we get so busy that we forget. We forget to notice the presence of God, the Spirit among us. The Spirit among us. I was talking on the phone with Savannah 
um, the other day. Savannah, you're new here, but you'll realize that any conversation can and will be used in a sermon. <laughs> Um, and so I was talking to Savannah the other day, and I was on the phone with her, and we were talking about all the many things that are coming up for Savannah, for children and youth ministry. It's a busy time in the life of the church for young people. The summertime is, and what I wanted to say to her really is if you survive the summer, then you're good to go. Um, I didn't say those words, but as we were talking, I heard Pastor Paul walk by her office. And he said, what in the world are you doing here today, Savannah? You're supposed to be taking a couple days off. You see, she just finished her high school teaching position. She just moved out of her classroom just a couple days ago, and her plan was to take a couple days off, to take some time for herself, right? And then Pastor Paul, of all people, I felt like was kind of calling the, the kettle, the pot calling the kettle black, right? You know, like, why are you here? Why aren't you taking time for yourself? Hmm, I don't know. Why isn't she? Um, and we can all be accused of that, I think. I laugh at myself sometimes. We have these calendars in the office between our between our offices, actually, and it's two months. And I was walking by the other day, and I said, I cannot believe that it's already the end of the month. I can't believe we already need to put the next month up. And Peyton called me out on that a little bit. She's like, you realize you always say that? <laughs> but it's true, isn't it? Time just gets away from us before we know it. December, we'll be back up on that calendar. We'll be getting ready for Christmas again. Time just flies. We forget to notice. We forget to be present. And our scripture today, we are reminded of the importance of acknowledging the spirit that is around us. We're reminded to remember that although we are busy and we are trying to do a lot of things with our hands and our minds, that that is not what's important. It's the spirit by which we do those things. It's the spirit by which God is calling us to build the kingdom, the future. But there is this tension there. There's this tension, and as I read these words about the Apostle Paul, I realized he was living in that tension. He was living in the excitement of this Christian community that was growing around him, and also acknowledging that his earthly body was not going to last forever. I thought about his words, and I, I thought about Jesus himself living in that same tension. You know, Jesus was fully divine and yet fully human. Jesus was sent to this world to love, to show us how to love as God loves, and yet Jesus was given a body that wasn't going to last forever. The same is true for us. As we walk throughout life trying to exemplify Jesus Christ in this world, it's not for right here and right now. It is for kingdom building. And yet, the tension is we are to be present right here and right now. We are to notice the spirit moving in and among us and around us. I'm not sure how much you keep up with theologians, but... This last week, the German Reformed theologian Jürgen Moltmann passed away. Now, Moltmann was a, a German um, professor in the University of Georgia. And you might be familiar with some of his books, like The Theology of Hope. That's a familiar one. The Crucified God, God in Creation, or The Source of Life. Well, everybody in, in my Facebook world was commenting on Moltmann passing away because we all studied Moltmann. And so I wanted to see what Moltmann had to say about the Holy Spirit. And this is what Moltmann said. Moltmann said, um, the Holy Spirit is, is the power of new life. A power which enlivens the body and the soul. A power which enlivens the spirit and the mind. He said, in the Holy Spirit, we experience the presence of God among a community of people. We experience the presence of God, God among the community of people. Do you experience the presence of God in this community? Do you feel something of the Spirit moving in and through this community? Do we allow ourselves to be present enough to notice the Spirit in this community. 
you know, Pastor Paul asked before, before the prayer time, what joys did you have? Where have you seen God at work in the world? And when we first started asking that question, it was like deer in the headlights. Like, nobody really had much to say. In fact, I wasn't sure if I had much to say. Right? Our lives are so busy that oftentimes we can't even tell you what we did the last week. Never mind try to notice where we saw God at work in the world. Or feel like it's something that could be shared. But that's gotten better this morning. Y'all talk about family. You talk about new worship services and being present. There's so much goodness out there. If we will pause to notice, Moment went on to say that the Holy Spirit ties together hope and holiness, creation and community, spirituality and prayer. And as followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to embody all of those things. How are we offering hope? How are we celebrating God's creation? How is our spirituality offering prayer and grace for others around us? How are we living in community with such a spirit? We are called into the world to live in the tension of it all, just like Jesus Christ did, just like the Apostle Paul did. It's never easy work. Never. We are faced with things that will challenge us in every way, just like Jesus was, just like the Apostle Paul was. Right? They didn't have it easy. Jesus ran into people all the time that didn't approve of him. Jesus was frustrated. We read that. We know that. But Jesus didn't judge others. Instead, Jesus prayed for his enemies. There is a tension there. But when we get so caught up in the busyness of our own lives, we forget what it means to be Christ in this world. We forget that the Spirit is living and moving in the depths of each of our souls. We get so busy that we forget sometimes who we were created to be. I am reading this book, as I mentioned a couple weeks ago, titled This Here Flesh by Cole Arthur Riley. We're actually going to do a book study on my porch in July on Tuesday morning, so everyone is invited to that. But Cole Arthur Riley writes this, Protect the truest things about you. Protect the truest things about you. For that is where you will find your calling. That is where you will find the very voice of God living within you. That is where the Holy Spirit lives. Protect the truest things about you. That is where the Holy Spirit lives within you. Friends, following Christ means that we have to slow down a bit. We have to be present in the here and now so we can build the kingdom for the future. If we fail to acknowledge the spirit that is guiding us, that is leading us, that is calling us, how then will others know the love and the depth of the grace and the mercy and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ? If we get so busy that our lives won't allow us to be that for this world. It's hard, though. It's, it's challenging to notice the spirit moving and working in this world. It's hard to notice God in our midst oftentimes. There's an old story about a disciple and his teacher. The disciple once asked, where shall I find God? Here, the teacher said, then why can't I see God? Because you do not look. But what should I look for? The disciple continued, nothing. Just look, the teacher said. But at what? At anything your eyes alight upon, the teacher said. But must I look in a special kind of way? No, the ordinary way will do. But I don't always look the ordinary way. No, you don't, the teacher said. But why not, the disciple pressed. Because to look, you must be here. And you, my friend, you are mostly Somewhere else.
the teacher said. Friends, we are mostly somewhere else. I don't know if it's a grocery list you're working on. I don't know if it's the news you watched this morning. I don't know if it's the things your kids have planned for the afternoon or if it's family or parents you need to go see later today. If it's your to-do list at the house. But we are mostly somewhere else. And in order to be at work in the world for God, for Christ's sake, we have to be able to notice the movement of the Spirit in us and through us and among us right here and right now. How is the Spirit moving? How is the Spirit calling you to kingdom things? And sure, there's a balance of it all, and it's hard to find that balance. My prayer every single morning when I get up is that I pray that I have the eyes to see. To see, to see the things that God is putting in my path. My prayer is that I have the courage to respond in whatever way that needs to be. With ears, with voice, with action. That I would have the heart and the courage and the grace to do that. My prayer is that we all could do that. But it's so easy to get so busy in our lives. It's so easy to get so busy over in the walls of that church. Calendars changing before our eyes on the walls. Things being added every single day, and yet we're called to live in the present. We're called to love as God loves. Because remember, if it's not of love, it's not of God. It's not of the Spirit. Paul writes, our bodies, they are not built to live forever, but our souls are. And that is the spirit within each of us. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God. A house not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Friends, the spirit is all around us, begging us to stop. To look to see, and to feel. So church, where is the spirit? Oh, man. 